Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We are beginning the final two months of the season. It's August 1st. We are just past, past the trade deadline. And the Pirates are still shockingly in first place in the National League Central. The issue... Well, this team has lots of issues, quite honestly. But the big issue is that we're coming off a pretty brutal 9-14 and 14 month in July. And what was a 10-game lead in the division at the start of July has been cut to a 4-game lead over the Reds. So we're now up by just 4 games in the NL Central. And we're only up by five and a half games to even hold on to a wild card. We've had a shockingly successful season so far for the Pirates. And despite the fact that three and a half months ago, we probably would have been content with a 500 season. We've been in first place for so long and we played so well this year that we don't want to do a uh, 2022 New York Mets and completely collapse and let the division go. So we made a couple trades at the trade deadline that we think will hopefully help a little bit. We added the left-handed reliever, Melvin Vasquez, 31-year-old from Oakland, who we think can help us as a lefty out of the pen. And we added the right-handed reliever, Jaden Daniels from St. Louis, who we also think can give us some help out of the bullpen. And about a week ago, we added a former Kansas City Royal who we picked up from the Atlanta Braves, was where he now was. He was with us last year for part of the year. We traded him to the Braves. He was injured a lot, didn't play much there. And we brought Victor Avear back to give us another bat. You can see he's plugged in as our DH against both uh, righties and lefties. So hoping that the boost of Avear in the lineup and then picking up a couple of relief pitchers is enough for the Pirates to kind of turn the turntables. My, how the turntables have turned on that uh, pretty bad July that we had. And uh, hopefully get through the next uh, seven weeks and have a spot in the playoffs when we get to the end of the regular season. There's no guarantees, but... Um, you can see we made a lot of progress last year on our first full season with the team. Goal this season is to just have been close to 500, improve team batting average, and improve attendance as long-term goals. And um, the long-term goals are actually improving attendance and building up the team to reach the playoffs. So there's a chance that we could conceivably knock all uh, all four of these owner goals out of the park this year if we become a playoff team and... Uh, continue to hit the ball a little bit so we will see what happens over the next seven plus weeks like i said um would have been happy at 500 when the season began that would have still been nice progress but there's no question here as we begin the month of august that anything less than a playoff berth is going to be a bitter disappointment And the first week of August was really good for the Pirates. You can see a 6-1 and one record, and we uh, pitched two shutouts in a row for the first two wins and then had uh, only one run allowed for two straight games against uh, St. Louis. So uh, really nice week for the Cardinals to go 6-1. and one. Open the lead back up to 5.5 on the Reds for the NL Central. And... Uh, Looks like we've now got a, not a great lead. Only only up six and a half on a wild card spot. Actually, no, we're up three. We're up nine and a half on a wild card spot. Um, so definitely a week closer to our goal. Um, hopefully we can keep playing the way that we played over the last week. And another week in the book for the Pirates, um, more of a 500 week, in fact a perfectly 500 week, having gone 3-3 three and three over our uh, six games this week. You can see we've got a big series home against the Cubs, and then a four game series at the Giants coming up for this next week. 
taking a look at the standings. Up seven and a half now on the Reds. As I mentioned, we're home against the Cubs, and then we're going out to play the Giants. Um, Cubs are in playoff contention. Giants are one of the uh, worst teams in baseball. So uh, hopefully we can uh, have at least a four and three week over these next seven games, keep the momentum up, and uh, finish August with a winning record for the month. That'll make it a lot easier to hopefully... Um, get into the playoffs here in about six or seven weeks and we shut out the Cubs yesterday uh, great pitching performance from Tony Santana and also set up to now get Pat Peaches back off of the injured list so that means that uh, Jose Bernal is going to go down so he didn't get much action at all one for five uh, a couple of strikeouts in the limited time that he was up uh, we will send Bernal back to AAA Indianapolis, bring Peaches back up onto the roster, upgrade, update our lineups by Jean Vasquez. You can see at this point now, Dave Urquiza, who we brought in, is a um, pretty important player, um, and he's actually, you know, personality of our personality is a captain, and he's a leader in our clubhouse, but he's not actually uh, regularly in the starting lineup anymore with. Ave Yar on um, on the team, but we're kind of back with our full um, full 26-man roster at this point. You can see we've got nobody on the injured list at the major league level. Probably jinxing ourselves by showing that, but um, we've got the team that we want here. Let's hope that we can uh, keep rolling over the last half of August. And after the big win against the Cubs on Monday, kind of a rough week for the um, Pirates here won only two other games, so we ended up three and four in the series is against the Cubs and the Giants. We've got the Padres coming up this week, uh, followed by a doubleheader with the Diamondbacks, and then three at home against Milwaukee. So uh, three in San Diego, and then five games at home. So we're going to be playing eight games this upcoming week. Taking a look at the standings, uh, still up seven on the Reds and eight on the Cubs, eight and a half on the Cardinals, so three teams chasing us. Magic number down to 22. You can see the rookie uh, Isaiah Hill is uh, leading the National League in batter war by a full run at this point, so it would be a huge upset, obviously, if he's not the MVP, or not the rookie of the year with a 311 average, 36 homers, and 108 ribbies here on August 22nd. But he does also, you know, potentially have a chance to be uh, joining that rarefied air of players who are uh, MVP and Rookie of the Year in the same season. I think, uh, I think it's Fred Lynn and um, Ichiro. I think that's the extent of that list. I uh, could be wrong. Correct me below if I am. Uh, and Tony Santana having a really nice year as a pitcher, and uh, you can see he's actually kind of got potential to develop some more skills all of a sudden he's a four and a half star potential pitcher um, he's a guy we've loved since we took over this team uh, we've been trying to sign him but he knows his value um, last I looked he was looking for a 10-year extension at close to 22 million dollars a year um, guessing it hasn't gotten any better well, actually it has a little bit 10 years at 21.3 million a year um, you know, we don't have the capacity to even sign him to a contract like that right now. And his arbitration estimate for next year is not horrible, but he's going to start getting real expensive real soon. Um, all the more reason why we want to, uh, try to make it to the playoffs this year, take advantage of some of these young guys while we've still got them because, um, there's definitely, uh, Definitely not going to be able to keep all of the good young players on this team unless we really kind of keep keep that budget moving in the right direction. You can see it did peak at $160 million for the Pirates uh, six seasons ago. So there's definitely potential if we manage things well to get a better, um, 
better budget and ultimately a better player payroll than we do today. And you can see that our revenue per game is up 54% this year. Still more than a million dollars a game less than we were bringing in in Kansas City. So that right there tells you that the Royals budget should be at least $81 million higher than the uh, Pirates budget, which it certainly is. But um, definitely feel like we're moving this thing in the right direction, not just on the field, but also in terms of the financial situation, the fan interest, um, baby steps, but we'll keep them moving in the right direction. Let's hope we can have a good week with the eight games we've got coming up. And another very mediocre week in the books for the Pirates here as we approach the end of August. Um, yeah, it was four and four, but we got off to a two and four start before winning the final two against Milwaukee got an off day today and then two games at the Reds to um, finish off the month of August and then have an off day Thursday before we play the Blue Jays um, so two big games with the Reds um, taking a look at the standings they're six and a half behind us now so uh, with a magic number of 15 certainly two games against the Reds if we're able to sweep those it's going to make it pretty tough to get get this uh division lead away from us if we're swept by the reds who knows as we head into the month of september uh one decent piece of news we are up to 81 wins now um so certainly as i said our goal is absolutely to make the playoffs but playing close to 500 ball we're definitely going to achieve that goal which will be good and if you were looking closely at the standings, you'll see that uh, Isaiah Hill is now kind of running away with the lead in batter war for the National League. Second in the league with 117 runs batted in, up to 39 home runs now, hitting 315. He has had a fantastic season here as a rookie at the age of 23, definitely living up to his number one pick in the draft status in 2034 and his ranking as the number six prospect in baseball is uh, probably a little bit low with the season that he's put together for these pirates and as you might have guessed by the way uh, isaiah hill's been rocketing up that war board for the national league named the uh, top player in the national league nl batter of the month also NL Rookie of the Month, um, 395 average, seven home runs and 25 runs batted in for the month of August. Um, I can see a lot of other awards throughout our farm system too. Uh, unfortunately, we did lose both games to the Reds. Um, so that was not a great way to finish the month of August. Um, taking a look at our team statistics. We did finally get back to having a winning record, so we bounced back a little bit from the week July. Uh, but a 533 winning percentage is uh, certainly not exceptional. Better than we would have expected um, five months ago, but um, not really fitting with the way these Pirates have played all year. You can see we're down to ninth in the National League and runs scored at this point. Our batting average has slipped to eighth. Uh, we still have the best pitching staff in the league. Starters first in ERA, first in the league in runs allowed. And you can see generally in the top five in most pitching categories. Our defense, which we really focused on last off season, a lot better this year. And we're also somewhat better in base running than we were a year ago. So can kind of understand um, why the Pirates are doing better than they were a year ago. That said, the lead in the division is down to just four and a half games at this point. Um, so uh, we're going to see if we can hang on for these last three, three and a half weeks of the regular season and uh, hopefully claim a National League Central title. At the very least, hopefully we claim a playoff spot. And with September roster expansion here, uh, no surprise to those of you who have been watching, but Andres Mendez, number 89 prospect in baseball, left-handed bat, who hit 323 with 19 home runs in AAA this year. 
uh, going to bring him back up to the club, uh, the big club. You can see he was up a little bit at the end of last season. Kind of got stuck in a numbers game this year, and we wanted him to have a bit more seasoning. Um, but we are definitely a right-handed heavy lineup, even if he's not playing regularly every day at the majors, which is really why we, we sent him down. He wasn't going to be playing every day with this team. But now that we are in a um, pennant hunt, and as you can see, we do not have too many left-handed bats on this team. Really just our shortstop, Fonseca, who's hitting only 206. And then our center fielder, Carbajal, who's hitting 268, but um, doesn't really have a ton of power. Um, kind of scary, but the uh, youngster, Mendez, becomes by far the best left-handed bat on our team, even though he's not going to be in the lineup every day. Hopefully he'll have the opportunity to get some big pinch hits for us. And we're also going to bring Willie Arenales back up to the majors. Um, he was a guy who was kind of uh, caught in a numbers game when we brought on Jaden Daniels and Melvin Vasquez um, right before the end, right before the trade deadline. Um, so Arenales, since he had options, had to go back down to AAA, where he did a solid job, um, 212 ERA down there. So obviously pitched better than he did in Pittsburgh. But he is a 24-year-old, was a Rule 5 pick of ours um, back in 2037 when we started this playthrough and uh, still could be an important part of this pitching staff going forward. Taking a look at the rest of this week that we've got ahead of us, though, after losing two in a row, would be nice to pick up some, some games home against Toronto. Not sure what kind of season they're having. But given that we are at home, certainly want to take two out of three against them. They're uh, below 500 teams, so definitely would like to take two out of three against Toronto and uh, hopefully not let the Reds get any closer because uh, after the two-game series loss to them, our magic number still stands at 15. Well, the good news is we did take two out of three at home against Toronto, although we dropped the last game of the series. Uh, the bad news is that the Reds just keep on winning six in a row for them, and we've only got a three-game lead in the division right now. So uh, things are getting a little tight here. Got about two and a half weeks left in the season. We've cut the magic number down just a little bit to 13 with the two wins that we got. But clearly it would be helpful if Cincinnati started to lose some games. Uh, the one thing that we do have going for us is we've got two games at home against them uh, the week after next. So uh, that could be an opportunity for us to put a stranglehold on the division. But if things don't go well, it's also an opportunity for them to perhaps uh, you know, take the lead in the division away from us. We're home against Miami for three games this week, and then we travel to Milwaukee for four that, I believe, is actually a pretty good schedule for us. Yeah, Miami is already eliminated from the playoffs, 57-91. and 91, And the Brewers already eliminated from the playoffs at 52-95. and 95. They are the worst team in baseball. And the Marlins, despite four wins in a row, are also one of the worst teams in baseball. So um, no excuses. Need to go at least four and three this week. And honestly, hopefully we can go five and two against a couple of bottom feeders like those two teams. And fortunately, it was a fantastic week for the Pirates against those weaker teams. You can see we went seven and zero. Oh. Um, can't ask for anything better than that, obviously. Um, still only opened up the lead to five and a half is uh, the Reds eight and two over their last 10. You can see that we're nine and one. Uh, magic number is down to four. So with the two game series with the Reds coming up, uh, if we sweep that, the division will be ours. Honestly, with the big lead we have at this point, certainly would love to have a sweep, particularly at home. But all we really need to do is split with them, and it's going to be very difficult for them to um, overcome the lead that we've kind of expanded over this past week with our sweeps of Miami and the Brewers. And looking at the leaderboard, you can see Isaiah Hill remains second in the National League as a rookie with 125 runs batted in, still leading the league in batter war. 
Uh, 313 batting average, 41 homers, 125 driven in, 42 doubles, 14 stolen bases. Uh, just a brilliant year for the young right fielder, as I said. Uh, the hope now is that he uh, gets the Rookie of the Year MVP duo. Uh, not too many people in the history of baseball have done that. Tony Santana remains third in the league in earned run average. And Ernesto Moreno is now fourth in the league in saves. So um, the Pirates still have not clinched a playoff spot, but we are getting close. Uh, but obviously at this point with a five-and-a-half game lead uh, with nine, nine games to go, um, certainly want to uh, make sure that we claim the division because if we claim the division unless um, – I mean, there's no. If we claim the division, we're going to have a first round bye, which will be big. Um, Diamondbacks are not going to get past us if we win enough games to win the National League Central. So we've got two games at home against Cincinnati. Uh, the last two division games we have of the year. Then we're going to be home for four against the Phillies, and then home for three against the. Giants to finish the season. So a nice uh, nine game homestand to finish things off makes it uh, even make it even harder if we can't clinch the division with um, a magic number of four nine games left and they're all at home. And certainly if we take care of business over the next two games, um, the division will be ours. Three to four loss in the first game of the series, though. Continue to get some scouting reports back as we're spending some time kind of scouting our entire uh, system over these last few weeks of the season, just so we go into the off season, kind of knowing exactly what we have with everybody on the team. Would be nice to uh, win this game against Cincinnati. Otherwise, uh, we'll have lost... Uh, Four in a row to Cincinnati, at least four in a row to Cincinnati in these two two-game series if we don't uh, win this game today. Would be nice to get that magic number down to two with a victory. And we will find out what happens. And the Reds sweep us again in the two-game series, so... Um, not going to make it easy. And now we've got the Phillies and the Giants for the last few games of this season. We have clinched a playoff spot, though, um, despite the loss. So I certainly did not expect we were going to be a 90-win team or a playoff team here in the second year of this playthrough. But um, We've caught lightning in a bottle. Uh, definitely want to make sure that we hold on to the division, which is by no means guaranteed. The lead is down to three and a half at this point, and we're up three games on the Diamondbacks for the second best record in the NL. Uh, tough matchup with the Phillies coming up, who are still in a big battle for the NL East. Uh, hopefully, though, with the Giants in the last few games of the season, they won't have a lot to play for at that point. Um, we'll see what happens with the Phillies, though. The division is by no means ours, but we will be in the playoffs, which is shocking and sweet. And the season could be getting away from us. We took the first game against the Phillies. We've lost two in a row. And now we are dealing with an injury situation. Um, Omar Ganoa, the lefty, mild shoulder inflammation, one week recovery time with a moderate impact on his throwing. Um, if we put him on the 15 day IL, um, we won't have him. I don't think we'll have him available for the playoffs, even if we get the first round by. Um, yeah, we can't afford to put him on the 15-day IL, but we don't want to mess with it, so we are just going to uh, bench him for the next week, which should take us through the rest of the regular season. But before our playoff series starts, um, 
taking a look at the standings, it's down to two games, and our magic number is down to three. The Reds just keep winning, and we've only won one of our last five games. Um, and the Phillies still have a ton to play for and a flat-footed tie with the Nationals for the not just the NL East title, but the um, best record in the National League and home field advantage um, throughout the NL playoffs. So um, they've got a lot to play for. We've got a lot to play for. Um, the Reds have been playing incredibly over these last few weeks of the season. They're definitely making this challenging for us, no doubt about it. So given that we're playing at home, hopefully we can get the series split today against the Phillies. Would be nice to get one game closer to clinching the division also. And we do get a 4-3 to three victory, so that's big. Um, let's take a look at the standings. The Reds keep winning, so our magic number is still 2. But uh, we've got 3 games left, and we're up by 2 games. Uh, nothing's guaranteed yet, but we've got a pretty good matchup against the Giants at this point. Let's check in on the Reds and see who they're playing against. Ooh, and they're finishing with the Cubs. They've already taken three straight at home, and then they go to Wrigley for the final three on the road. So um, Cubs are now they're officially eliminated. They just were eliminated from the playoff race, so uh, they don't have a ton to play for at this point. I'm sure they'd like to um, at least finish the season with a. 500 or better record, so hopefully that's a little incentive for the Cubbies to play well, but um, the matchup still favors us, is the uh, Giants have absolutely nothing to play for. They're not going to have a winning record. I guess, theoretically, they probably want to avoid last place, and they could get by the Rockies and or the Dodgers, but uh, Pirates certainly have more to play for than the Giants at this point, so hopefully we can win a couple games and uh, get this division clinched. So three games to go before the playoffs begin. If we can hold on and win the division, we'll have a first round bye. If not, we're going to be playing in a wild card series, and we certainly want to avoid that if at all possible. So let's hope we can beat the Giants at home. And you would be shocked to know that my computer is actually pretty new, but I think this game file is getting so big that it's uh, running even slower than in the past. And a 9 to nothing victory. Um, if the Reds also lost, the division is ours. And the Reds finally did lose, so the Pittsburgh Pirates are going to be your 2039 NL Central Division champions. So uh, in two seasons running this franchise, we have gone from literally the worst team in baseball to first in the NL Central. And Marco Estrada with the excellent performance and that 9 to nothing victory, 7-hit shutout for the starting pitcher for us. Um, I have no idea how sustainable this season from the Pirates is. Um, not going to shock me if we're struggling to be a 500 team again again next season because we do have um, a lot of pretty important players who are going to be leaving our team next year. And you can see we've also got a fair amount of players that we have others paying their salaries for who are particularly important for us. But... Um, not going to change the fact that we've got um, got the Pirates in our second season into the playoffs. And uh, all we're asking for is a chance. Um, you would think that with the revenue that we've generated per game being up almost 60% at this point, 
You can see we've been selling out most of our games over the last month and a half as we've been making this push for the playoffs that we should get a decent bump in our budget for next season. Uh, obviously, if we can, we're going to have at least one playoff series. And if we can, uh, you know, the longer we last, the more money we make from the playoffs, the more money that potentially even Ebenezer Nutting will put into our uh, budget for next year. So um, the season's not over and uh, looking forward to the playoffs. Now the big hope is that we can just... Uh, remain healthy over these last couple games of the year. We don't really need to get too, um, too wound up with our pitching staff because we're going to have some time off uh, between now and the um, NLDS. I guess theoretically we do want to make sure that um, Santana probably is ready to pitch the first day if he pitches the last game of the season, but he won't be. He pitched three days ago, 90 pitches, so we'll be fine. Um, Santana, we just want to make sure that he's ready for game one. I think theoretically if he pitched the last game of the year, depending on how the calendar went for the um, – wild card series he might he might only have three days and i think he'd still probably have four days of rest i think we'd be fine either way so don't need to spend a lot of time stressing about um the pitching rotation but we will um we will stress about hopefully remaining healthy over these last couple games um isaiah hill unless something wacky happens is going to lead the uh national league in batter war um be nice to get to a nice round number like 130 runs batted in but a um 309 batting average 43 homers and 128 ribbies at this point with 116 runs scored uh just a brilliant rookie season for the young right fielder and um ernesto moreno um still third in the national league in saves looks like um Looks like Santana has kind of uh, fallen out of the top three in the National League in ERA. Um, but still a very solid season, 11-9, 3.16 ERA. And you can see our starting pitching has been the strength of this team. Every starting pitcher won at least 11 games. And the highest ERA among any of the starters is 3.56. With the exception of Santana, who did have that IL stint, um, every starter also over 210 innings pitched. So very good and very durable performance from this young starting rotation here in the 2039 season. And we split the final two games with San Francisco. Uh, lost the last day of the year. 9 to 5 doesn't look like there are any injuries Omar Ganoa we know that he's dealing with that mild shoulder inflammation just one day left so he should be ready when we get to the playoffs other than that doesn't look like anyone at the major league level is banged up so um these Pirates um, were not as good in the second half of the season as we were in the first half of the season, but we finished strong with a 13-6 and record in September, and that allowed us to hang on and very shockingly win the National League Central by two games over the Reds. And we did end up with the second best record among the division winners. So we are inexplicably going to have a first round bye in the playoffs. Um, Isaiah Hill leads the National League in batter war. As I said, um, it's unfathomable to me that he will not be the rookie of the year with a 309 average, 44 homers, 129 runs batted in. And as I've talked about, I think there's a chance that he's also going to be the MVP of the National League here as a rookie, but that is not our primary focus right now. Our primary focus is to get these Pirates ready for the National League playoffs, and we will find out how they do in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and hope you have a great day.